The term peer pressure by commitment may appear to be a little technical, and to some extent it is, but everybody understands that peer pressure has a sense of um, inclusiveness. Your peers, you know, you may look different, some taller, some shorter, darker, lighter, but your peers, we're talking about countries here, uh, they're peers, they are the same, they have the same status in, in, in some way. And then they commit, they commit to each other. So it's neither top down nor bottom up, kind of in the middle there. So the proposal here is to build on something CG has been proposing um, at a both analytical and practical level uh, for a, a decade now, I mean, people associated with CG, uh, which is that the G7 was getting a little bit too narrow, too perhaps homogeneous, too much, there were too much peers in, in some sense. The G20 therefore was a very clever way, and Canada is commended for this because in a way it was against its immediate self-interest because it was a kind of the, one of the smallest of the big ones and then it became diluted or it could have become diluted. This has not happened uh, or this will not happen is uh, the point I make here uh, to the extent that the peer pressure by commitment applies. What the paper says is they may well not want, they may well say well look let's just avoid too drastic a change but then there's a point they may want to do it and not succeed because they have no commitments. They can't manage their diversity. So here's the, here's the suggestion. If they could at least agree on how to help those that are much poorer, uh, we're talking especially about Africa, but not exclusively, then that would create a greater inclusion than even the group of G20 countries can muster. So the point here is let's find ways of reaching out even more than has been the case from the G7 to the G20 and doing so by incorporating regional organizations. We're talking about Europe and we're talking about Africa, the African Union and the Commission of the African Union.